Nature by Ralph Waldo Emerson Introduction A subtle chain of countless rings The next unto the farthest brings The eye reads omens where it goes And speaks all languages, the rose And, striving to be man, the worm Mounts through all the spires of form Introduction Our age is retrospective it builds the sepulchres of the fathers it writes biographies histories and criticism the foregoing generations beheld god and nature face to face we through their eyes why should not we also enjoy an original relation to the universe why should not we have a poetry and philosophy of insight and not of tradition and a religion by revelation to us and not the history of theirs embosomed for a season in nature whose floods of life stream around and through us and invite us by the powers they supply to action proportioned to nature why should we grope among the dry bones of the past or put the living generation into masquerade out of its fated wardrobe the sun shines to-day also there is more wool and flax in the fields there are new lands new men new thoughts let us demand our own works and laws and worship undoubtedly we have no questions to ask which are unanswerable we must trust the perfection of the creation so far as to believe that whatever curiosity the order of things has awakened in our minds the order of things can satisfy every man's condition is a solution in hieroglyphic to those inquiries he would put he acts it as life before he apprehends it as truth in like manner nature is already in its forms and tendencies describing its own design let us interrogate the great apparition that shines so peacefully around us let us inquire to what end is nature all science has one aim namely to find a theory of nature we have theories of races and of functions but scarcely yet a remote approach to an idea of creation we are now so far from the road to truth that religious leaders dispute and hate each other and speculative men are esteemed unsound and frivolous but to a sound judgment the most abstract truth is the most practical whenever a true theory appears it will be its own evidence its test is that it will explain all phenomena now many are thought not only unexplained but inexplicable as language sleep madness dreams beasts sex philosophically considered the universe is composed of nature and the soul strictly speaking therefore all that is separate from us all which philosophy distinguishes as the not me that is both nature and art all other men and my own body must be ranked under this name nature in enumerating the values of nature and casting up their sum i shall use the word in both senses in its common and in its philosophical import in inquiries so general as our present one the inaccuracy is not material no confusion of thought will occur nature in the common sense refers to essences unchanged by man space the air the river the leaf art is applied to the mixture of his will with the same things as in a house a canal a statue a picture but his operations taken together are so insignificant a little chipping baking patching and washing that in an impression so grand as that of the world on the human mind they do not vary the result 